What are you doing here? You said the place is going to be empty. Yeah. Change of plans. I decided to help out. And you're the boss. That's right. I'm the boss. Oh, wait. Did you wipe your feet? Yes, sir. I, I wiped them outside, like, like you said. Good. Then let's do it. You can start with these right here. So, um, how's this work? I mean, when do you call the insurance company? I won't be calling the insurance company. What's that? This? Oh, uh, this is your gun, Dewey. My gun? This one's mine. This is the one that I'm going to kill the intruder with. Intruder? <gasps> Rob? What was that? Are you all right? I'm fine, Pam. Everything's fine. You better come down. Sound like a gun. It was. Oh my God. Rob, is he dead? What did you do? He had a gun. This one. No. Wait. This one. All right, we ID'd the body to a kid up a punk named Dewey Jordan. He lives in Coal Valley. About 4 a.m., parks in the driveway right out front. Point of entry, side patio door. Yeah, he parked in the driveway. That's kind of risky. Yeah, he probably figured he'd be in and out. Maybe. All right, the husband, Robert Sherman, and his wife, Pam, they're upstairs in bed. She wakes up, says she's cold. She comes downstairs to adjust the thermostat. Thermostat? Yeah, it's right over there. She confronts the intruder. He shoots her. One shot, 38 caliber. The husband hears the shot. He grabs his gun. It's a 9 millimeter Glock. It's registered. We already checked. Where was the gun? Uh, upstairs uh, in a lockbox near the bed. So he comes running downstairs. The intruder fires, misses, hits the wall. Husband returns fire. Bang. One shot. End of story. One shot. Bang. End of story. Dory, the soles of his shoes are clean. So? Look, he cut through the garden out back. I think he wiped his feet. You know, it makes sense. He didn't want to leave any footprints. But he did leave footprints on the patio. I saw them when I came in. Why would he wipe his feet? You wiped your feet. But I'm me. That, that doesn't count. It's a private property here, okay? Now, shouldn't you guys be in school? Oh, um, we're with my mom, Natalie Teeger. She's here with Mr. Monk. Yeah, she just went in to get him. And you are? I'm, uh, I'm nobody. Oh, um, his name is Tim. He's my boyfriend. Yeah, I can see that from your shirt. So, where were you guys? Some, uh, amusement park? Um, yeah, the Bay City Pier. He works there. Guess there's no such thing as dress codes anymore, huh? You were in traffic court four weeks ago, August 14th, 8 a.m., at the Vinton Street Courthouse. And this is Dewey's rap sheet. Uh, he was at a bail reduction hearing. Same courthouse. Same day. 8 a.m. Is that where you met him? Mr. Sherman? Is there a problem? No. No, there's, there's no problem. No problem at all. This is my <coughs> secretary, Allison Clark. Well, uh, you're right, Mr. Monk. It appears that uh, Mr. Jordan and I were in the same building. On the same day, just a few weeks before he was shot, and I don't believe in coincidence. Mi, mi gusta mi hermano. No, mi hermana, remember? Feminine words end in A. It's easy. No, screen passes are easy. This is hard. Okay, and masculine words end in O, like mi amigo. I hope so. I was actually hoping we could be more than amigos. Honey, it's 10.30. Didn't you say you wanted to get to bed early? No, no, I, I, I didn't. Well, it's probably a good idea. You have a big day tomorrow. Clay, see you manana. What? Tomorrow. I guess that's my cue. I'll see you around. Hey, 
You've got study hall second period, right? Yeah, how'd you know that? Quarterback has to see the whole field. It's me. I just left her. Well, it's only 10.30. Mom kicked me out, but don't worry. It's going fine. She's hooked, I can tell. I just gotta reel her in. Well, reel her in quick. Did he ask her out? Oh, not yet. Maybe tomorrow. Relax, she likes him. It's gonna happen. Just like you planned. How long did he live here? Ten months. I should've known it was gonna be trouble. Always late with the rent, always coming and going. I mean, is it true what they're saying? I mean, he broke in and killed the guy's wife? I don't know. I don't think so. What is it? This air vent. It's rusty. So? Screws are brand new. Do you have a screwdriver? What is it? It's a 22. Why didn't he bring this gun? So he had another gun. But there's, there's no ammo for a 38 caliber in here. It's all for this gun. I don't think he had another gun. Excuse me. Miss Teeger? Sorry. Does Julie know about her? Who's Julie? This is not what you think, or what you think. Somebody hired me to go out with their daughter. You said get a job. Somebody hired you. Your sister, Karen. Aunt Karen? She said she didn't like Julie's boyfriend, so she paid me $500 to break him up. Clay, I don't have a sister. No, 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 it's true. I can prove it. Um, I still got the money, yeah, or most of it. Excuse me, C can, can I see that? Careful. This woman, this Aunt Karen, what did she look like? Uh, pretty long, dark hair. With glasses. How'd you know? Natalie, I know what's going on. Julie, the murder, it's all connected. Julie's t-shirt? That's what this whole thing has been about. Her t-shirt? I, I, I don't understand. Tim, I've been waiting a long time to say this. Here's what happened. We know Dewey Jordan has been here. Mr. Monk noticed some game coupons in his apartment. Rob Sherman and Dewey Jordan met a couple of weeks ago at the courthouse. Sherman probably told Dewey he was pulling some kind of insurance scam, but they had to meet again someplace to work out the details. They met here at the pier. It was perfect. Noisy, a big crowd. Nobody would notice them. But I, I don't understand. What does all this have to do with Julie? It was the same day that you and Julie were here getting your picture taken. Our picture? Exactly. The photographer had you pose right over there, but there were other people standing behind you. That's where Mr. Monk had seen them together, on Julie's t-shirt. They were in the background the whole time. Now it makes sense. That's why he was acting so weird that day we met him. Yeah, when Mr. Sherman saw that t-shirt, he knew he was in trouble. He saw Julie hanging out with Mr. Monk, the captain, and Randy. It was only a matter of time before somebody noticed it. I know, but uh, why didn't he just try to steal it? That's too risky. Remember, he didn't have to destroy the shirt. He just wanted Julie to stop wearing it. So he had his girlfriend contact Clay. She pretended to be Julie's aunt. I get it. Julie breaks up with me and she never wears a shirt again. She's right, you are pretty smart. That's why we're here. The captain's getting a search warrant. The photo booth keeps backup copies of all the pictures. It's jungle out there. Disorder and confusion everywhere. No one seems to care. Well, I do. Hey, who's in charge here? It's jungle.